seconds. Sure. <laughs> go. Does that mean, that, I was about to say, does that mean go? <laughs> yeah, I was going to do that, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Got a Warner Brother about that. <clears throat> hey, what's going on, gamers? This is AJ. Matt. Eric. And we are coming to you here with our audio podcast only. And uh, so far, it's been working here. A lot of people are enjoying it. And uh, I've been told that I have a sexy voice, so this is fantastic. Uh, so <laughs> sexy today because you're sick. Exactly. Extra sexy. So I'm, uh, I'm sucking on a lozenge right now. And uh, hopefully uh, you guys are enjoying it. Hey, now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have a few things that we want to go over today here. A lot of exciting things, uh, you know, in gaming news, of course. Um, we did touch upon, uh, you know, a few things last week. Um, we went over, of course, you know, uh, with Xbox kind of uh, uh, extending over past the uh, Xbox console, uh, going into a few things. So I don't know about if you guys have, uh, you know, heard about in better detail. So apparently here other than um you know microsoft or xbox you know trying to get onto other consoles like you know uh, the tablets and smartphones and things like that they're instead of like a um uh was it like a console war now they're actually there's going to be like a uh you know a streaming war so a lot of people are trying to do now a lot of subscription-based formats kind of like trying to copy uh what netflix has done so there's amazon's on the bandwagon google's trying to get into this here so a lot of interesting things that are going on now with uh you know subscription based models. So I don't know if you guys have heard about anything about uh about what's going on. You know, if 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 you've heard about Amazon is actually looking to get into gaming also with the subscription model. Have you guys heard about anything about that? I I mean I've heard of things throughout the years that people are trying to do that. Um it's definitely harder I, I think cuz I mean but it's it everything's trending that way. So a lot of these big box stores like GameStop included they're hmm. starting to shy away from the actual physical store to the everything online. I mean, if you look at online sales over the last couple of years, they have skyrocketed um, on every system. Nintendo uh, on on the Switch, on the uh, on the Xbox, on the PlayStation. It, that's where a majority of people do their sales because. You've noticed, like I, I definitely noticed, like some of the sales on, like the downloadable stuff is cheaper than it would be on, say, like going to the store, like a Black Friday deal or anything like that. It's definitely it's trending that way. So I I totally get where people are doing the subscriptions and stuff like that for. What do you think, Eric? Um. Well, I know Amazon. They own Twitch, and then Twitch has the uh, Prime member rewards. Yes. So they they always have some free games on there, uh, just for being a Prime member. Um, so that'd be one thing that they're doing. And then you just every every single big name owns a store. You got the PlayStation Four, Xbox, and Nintendo. They all have a store online. Then there's Steam, Origin, Epic Games Launcher. It's all the all those are for the uh, digital copy, not the physical. So I mean, it's it's definitely trending that way. Oh yeah. I mean, definitely, if you, even if you look on Amazon, they have a lot more deals. They don't necessarily have deals for, like, their, um, like, the digital download code because you really can't discount a code. But, I mean, at that rate, if you're discounting the physical copy of the game, why don't you discount the code? Or at least that's how I feel because I've seen it a bunch because I, I pre-ordered a bunch of my, uh, my games from Amazon when they had, were giving that around that. 20% off deal when you pre-order certain games. So I mean, Okay. Yeah, I mean I I think I think the subscription basis is is trending that way. I mean, I know you have it and I have it uh the Xbox Game Game Pass. Mhm. Freaking awesome. Like 10 bucks a month. Oh yeah, and, I love it. And they are constantly adding new stuff. They're constantly adding AAA titles like Forza Horizon 4, Crackdown 3. I know it's not a good game. But Crackdown 3, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had a chance to play it myself. I know it's co-op, so maybe AJ, me and you got to try it out. Dude, I'm plays. definitely down. Do you get to play the Cruise? Because if you can, then I'm definitely down to play. I think you do. What? I'm down Very to play. Cool. Oh, I don't know if you play him. I know he's in the game. Though. I think he's one of the main characters. And you actually, because the single player, there's two modes. There's a single player mode, and then there's a multiplayer mode. 
Mm -hmm. The single player mode is co-op, so it's two players in co-op, which I think is kind of cool. That's pretty cool. So while we're on the uh, on the subject of um, subscription based models, so everybody, um, all gamers probably know this by now. Unfortunately, um, GameStop isn't really faring too well. So it seems that um, the inevitability of GameStop becoming another blockbuster with it shutting down might be uh, coming within the next foreseeable, like within the foreseeable future. What do you guys think about that? Well, I know they're not. They're not. They- the the company CEOs they put the company up for for sale. I know that they're looking for a, a buyer to sell it. I don't think it's going anywhere because I think if anything they're going to transition to more of the selling of items. Because I don't know if you've been into a GameStop store in the recently. Like majority of it is just selling items. Like it's it's an accessories for games and whatnot. It's not really selling of the games anymore it's more about hey here's this cool kingdom hearts figure here's a cool t-shirt hey so they're pretty much like a think geek now but i know well, they, the they same, uh they, they own think geek so yeah. that that's probably why i heard a lot when i spoke with a couple of um gamestop employees they're basically saying that they were kind of aggravated with selling all the uh the merch they'd rather just kind of stick to the game so you, you think that it's just gonna switch over instead of being gamestop but it's probably just gonna think eagle will probably just take over and then just everything's gonna be merch then yeah i think so i think <clears throat> it's totally gonna be merch so might make sense i mean especially because uh if everybody's gonna be down you know in the download model and subscription based model unfortunately that's gonna uh, kind of weed out GameStop for selling physical copies, and then physical copies are going to kind of go uh, the way to the dodo. Yeah. So, I mean, it's definitely interesting <clears throat> the way that it that it's trending. I mean, like, we, we've come... I remember going to, like, Sears and looking for games. Now Sears just doesn't sell anything anymore like that. Like, and you go to t- stores like Target, Walmart, they're Toys all... Us. Yeah, Toys R Us is another good example. I remember I have so many things in my office of things that are from Toys R Us. <laughs> and now they're just gone. They're, but they're actually trying to come back. Did you hear about that? I, I did hear about that. That was about like about a month or so ago, I think they're trying yeah. to come back. But I don't, I don't know if they're going to be able to, especially in this uh, day and age where everyone's uh, you know, not really even. And that's not that's, that's another thing. Uh, no one's really buying physical toys as much. That everyone's online playing video games or watching uh, YouTube cat videos and stuff like that. Well, yeah, that's just, and and if you're gonna like people like, I mean, we talk about like digital stuff all day long because you mm. have, um, you have like Fortnite, all the V Bucks, you have Apex that has all this stuff. Even those those g- games are free games. There's still a way for people to make money on. <clears throat> Same thing in like YouTube. We can, you can. The ad revenue, a lot of YouTubers can talk about that. Like, it's just, mm. it sucks now. But it's just the, the way that everything is trending. And most Unfortunately, or fortunately, yeah. But, uh, all right. Well, so just to kind of wrap it up, Eric, what are, uh, what are your thoughts about uh, everything we just kind of talked about, GameStop and everything else? Um, I mean, I, I don't know. It's just, even, even with shopping, <laughs> you're still going to have online shopping. Mm. It's just all virtual now. There's not really the brick and mortar stores are obviously gonna get hit. I feel like the only thing that really isn't gonna get hit is clothing. But yeah, because it's like everybody like you can just go there and see what you like and try it on. Yeah, exactly. When you but when you order something online, it's a lot harder. I mean, trust me. There's so many times that like we can even talk about that too. I I my my wife ordered me uh board shorts. From uh, Think Geek, actually, it was kind of funny that it's from Think Geek. Like <laughs> the Zelda ones, I got extra nice. large. I'm not a big dude. I got a pretty much average waist, 38. An extra large was way too small for me. I was like, "Fuck you, man." <laughs> <laughs> I've been this, man. but the fact of the matter that I've also been the same. I wear the same size pants since high school. Like, isn't it? Is a testament to my to me. But now. An extra large is too small. Now, is just a, is that just like a one-off, just from uh, you know, just from that one time, or you? No, I've, actually, I've noticed that I've I actually have to wear extra extra like double XL shirts. Yeah, now. but what is XL? Yeah, that's the they thing. Don't, no one describes like everybody's XL is different. Oh, totally. I totally agree with you. Yeah. But I've noticed this, especially a trend through like 
Target or Walmart. I have to buy shirts that are double XL because that now they do those like athletic fit. Mm. So yeah. everything is really tight. But if I go to like LL Bean, I get a normal like ex- extra large shirt. It's perfectly fine on me. But like hmm. Walmart and everything, they they're catering to smaller people. <laughs> Like, or, like, athletic built people. I'm hashtag dad bod, like, seriously. Oh, God, no, don't bring that back. <laughs> well, I am. I'm a dad, and I got a, I, I don't got a six-pack. I got a snack pack, okay? Well, yeah. I, th- I think more like a keg. I, I appreciate that a little more. I don't do though. You know that. <laughs> oh, man, that's funny. Okay, <laughs> so moving on. So moving right along here from that. So uh, there is another thing. So a um, little, uh, little plug for everybody here who's listening. Uh, we'll be actually having our tournament this coming Saturday. It's going to be uh, 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I'm terrible with other time zones. So uh, if you're not in Eastern uh, Standard Time. It's going to be, and I think it's 9 o'clock. No, I'm sorry. 3 o'clock Pacific. 3 o'clock Pacific. What about Latin? Uh, God, you're really four. testing me. Yeah, four. <laughs> it's an hour Damn. before that. An hour before. All right, I'm impressed. I only knew how uh, really Pacific. Uh, you guys are impressive. So we're going to be having really our first. Throw a monkey wrench in there. You got to say Greenwich Mean Time. Oh, good lord! I thought that I forgot that was a thing. All right, so now that you brought that up, what's that one? Then? I don't. I don't know. Eleven. <laughs> Is it eleven? Yeah. Nice. Eleven in the morning. Yeah, yeah Eric. Knows. Good God. Um. All right. So yeah, we're having our first tournament. Um, it's a thirteen person tournament. I know it's a weird number. Um, but we have four channels doing it. We are sponsored by a fifth. Um, it is just your average channel. We they got four. Share player one. They have four. Uh, it's all fun and games. Dom. He's he the guy who runs that one. He it's just him. Um, and four of us. So me, Eric. AJ and uh, Ryan. So the f- all thirteen of us are in it. I actually got to do the brackets today, so we'll do it. Maybe we'll do that after this. Um, are we gonna play ourselves? I feel like you should take the top two from each channel. Does that not? Well, what I what I what I is three of the people are gonna have a first round buy because it's an odd number. Mm-hmm. So what I was gonna do is I. That's why I grabbed you. I had you say a uh, number, AJ. So what I'm gonna I kind of figured I'm yeah. gonna randomize it ten times, so no one can bitch and moan about who gets a first round buy and who not, doesn't. So, nah, I, it's I all good. I think we're all having fun. fun. Yeah, we're just having, we're just having fun. fun. We're gonna we're we're all gonna get it. Uh, so the fifth channel is. Uh, Sector 7 item shop. She is going to be, she's actually in the process of making a trophy that says everyone else sucks. <laughs> Which I think is <laughs> awesome, by the way. So we will, we, will be, we will be starting at 6 and uh, it will be best of 3 up until the finals. And the finals and the third place match are going to be best of 5. So should be fun. Do a smash. <clears throat> Exactly. Exactly. So it'll be a uh, it'll be a good time had by all. Hopefully, uh, it should be uh should be pretty good, as long as uh everybody leaves their their toxicity uh you know uh, at at the uh the doorstep. <laughs> but um, I, I, I guarantee you that's not gonna happen. Somebody's gonna say something. It's mostly gonna be us, and we're just gonna be like this mother. <laughs> <laughs> You're just looking for an excuse to use it. I love oh, it totally. I don't care. <laughs> I think it's, it's funny. Expensive one I've ever seen. It's not that expensive. Well, yeah, it's an expensive button. Well, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> Matt's new toy, the mixer. So, reason why I break the uh, bring that up, of course, you know, uh, to plug our uh, tournament, everybody catch it. So, uh, so Matt, where are we going to be streaming it from on our channel? Uh, we are going to be streaming it from our channel on Twitch. Uh, just your average channel is going to be streaming either on Twitch or on uh, YouTube. I think they said YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. No, they were saying whatever Chris wants. So it's either going to be Twitch or YouTube. One of the two. I don't care. Um, and, I, and I think um, SPO, SPO uh, is going to stream maybe on uh, Instagram. Instagram. Might, okay. Yeah, they might do it when they, their guys are up. So. Okay. 
Not too bad. Not too bad. Yeah. So everybody, uh, you know, come in and uh, check it out. We're also going to be uh, uh, the original idea was to have this up as a, uh, a charity tournament, but we want to make sure that we have all the kinks worked out first. So this is going to be uh, more of like a test tournament. So we're going to be, um, you know, we definitely want people to uh, pay attention a little bit closer to uh, the uh, uh, the charity of uh, Game Changer. So we definitely want to highlight them as uh, much as possible and promote them as much as possible. Yeah. So no uh, no donations this time. But um, to move along to uh, you know for a little bit of a seg- uh, segue, uh, reason why I bring that up for uh, for charities is because there's another charity that uh, we I I'd actually found out. And this is pretty interesting. Uh, so this charity is uh, called, let's see, Extra Life. So with Extra Life here, from everything that I had read, it's actually very interesting. So since 2011, these these guys have actually raised uh, 200, a uh, little over $200,000 for charity organizations here to uh, donate money, um, you know, to children's hospitals and stuff. So basically what they do is that it's kind of like more like a, you know, like a cancer walk. So, you know, like five K's, you know, you um, raise X amount of money and you do, uh, you know, do X amount of time. So mostly what they do is they hold a, uh, you know, the big, uh, you know, big events every November. So have you guys heard about that one yet? Yeah, I, I, I haven't heard about it, but that's pretty awesome that they do that. I think that's the uh, same charity that Bruce Keith works with. They do that big stream where it's like 24 hours or something. Oh, yeah. Yes. I think that's yeah, the I same organization they work with. Oh, that's pretty cool. Nice. Yeah, streaming. Uh, I mean, the fact of the matter that anybody that streams or anything like that and does that sh- stuff for charity is amazing. The fact of the matter that they're looking for just because that's pretty much what streamers do anyway on a daily basis. But instead of looking for charity for themselves, they're actually finally looking for charity for somebody else to help out the less fortunate. Because I know there's a couple other streamers that I've that I watch or YouTubers that I watch that do streams. Uh, one of them, uh, Terrorizer, he does a Movember one, uh, <laughs> which he grows a he grows a mustache. But he's I think last year he did over twenty five thousand dollars over like two weekends or a weekend. Actually, no, uh-huh. I think a whole month he did, and everything that he did he put straight into that charity, which was pretty awesome. So that's always good. Uh, I love when, uh, you know, watching YouTubers, streamers, everybody else like that. You know, again, like anytime that you can actually, you know, make a focus of something other than yourself, you know, especially uh, kind of give voices to those who don't have it, um, you know, highlight, uh, you know, def- different things uh, that are more important than yourself, such as, you know, children's charities, you know, uh, I think that's always uh, something to be admirable, you know, about uh but uh, I don't know. So, uh, so Rooster Teeth. So, have you watched um and that they had done before for the those tournament uh, uh those tournament things, Eric? Yeah, usually they have like a um they have like a donation tracker, obviously, and then when they hit a certain goal, they'll do something crazy on stream, like you know, shoot each other with paintballs or tase each other. <laughs> okay, so I do not want to get hit with a paintball, so uh, we might want to not That's do that not, for us. It's not that bad. I would definitely, I would totally, totally be for a taser. I think that would be a lot hilarious. A taser on your camera. Oh, I don't think it would be hilarious on me, but I think <laughs> it would be fucking hilarious in general. We're gonna tase Ryan. <laughs> oh yes, we're gonna totally tase Ryan, and he's gonna be like, "Stop beating me like my dad." <laughs> <laughs> he's still gonna have his stick going through it while he's getting tased. Either that, or we can play hot potato with a taser, like they did on Jackass. <laughs> oh God, no! Those guys are professional idiots. I'll just stick to uh, stick to being a minority idiot. Thank you. <laughs> oh god all right <laughs> all right so uh i actually kind of wanted to uh there's no there's no good transition from that so i'm just kind of gonna segue straight into uh straight into it so uh as everybody knows or at least a lot of people know so switch actually just celebrated or is going to be celebrating its uh two-year anniversary did it yesterday uh, on the third there we go. It was on the third. See, I was unaware of that. I was mm. running around everywhere. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Come on, I'm, I'm the resident Nintendo fanboy. This is very true. This is why. This is why. Uh, this is going to be your bread and butter here. So everybody, prepare for a match 15 minute rant. This is going to be awesome. So. And then Eric's <laughs> going to destroy me in two sentences. <laughs> <laughs> true. <laughs> so with the shirts, uh, the switch, of course, you know, turning two. Uh, I think it's actually um. Uh, performing a lot better than anybody had anticipated. I think they were thinking it was going to be more like a Wii U situation, which thank God it hasn't been. Uh, 
So funny enough, uh, I actually was uh, really interested to hear that in, uh, what was it, last year, 2018? Yeah. The uh, Switch is actually uh, the fastest, uh, you know, selling uh, system of the current generation. So I, I personally think that's, uh, you know, really interesting it's because I'm a Nintendo fanboy. Not as big as I was when I was a kid, but, you know, still, uh, uh, you know, since I got my 3DS and my, uh, you know, now the Nintendo Switch, uh, I definitely, uh, rekind- it definitely rekindled my love for Nintendo, especially because my favorite franchise, as you know, is uh, Legend of Zelda. Yep. So, uh, was it? Uh, so, Business Insider here uh, had also st- uh, stated that, <clears throat> excuse me, that Nintendo has uh, sold more games in 2018 than any other publisher. So six out of the top 20 best-selling games were Nintendo Switch exclusives. So this is where I'm going to hand the reins over to Matt. So there's a lot of other interesting, uh, you know, little tidbits of uh, information here that's going to be revolving in Nintendo. Uh, fairly certain that Matt's kind of, you know, seeing that the lips are going to kind of go over it. So we want to talk about a uh, couple of things for uh, Nintendo. Well, I mean, they just had their, um, what was it? A couple weeks ago, I think they had their uh, their Nintendo Direct. Mm-hmm. So they so what Nintendo does is I love what they do in the beginning of the year. They show off a Nintendo Direct and they show all the upcoming games for the rest of the year, which is I think is a really smart move. It kind of gets away from uh, E3, but it doesn't put a lot of pressure on them to come out with new things on E3, which is good. Um, they just did also last week. They did a Pokemon one, which they haven't done in a couple of years. Uh, the Pokemon one, they announced that the first full-fledged RPG game is coming to the Nintendo Switch later this year. It's called uh, Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield. It is uh, going to be taking place in the Galar region, G-A-L-A-R, and it is based off of England. So. This game, I know Eric didn't like the the trailer. I personally agree with him on this in the respect that I think they should have taken that trailer and put it at the end of the Nintendo Direct a couple weeks ago. Yeah, it wasn't that long. It was like only like what, minutes, right? Seven minutes. It was seven minutes. <laughs> so, and then they explained the game and the art direction of the game and whatnot. So it's definitely, it's going to be cool. And then they also had the starter reveal, which was uh, Sobble... Rookie and Score Bunny. So it was a fire type bunny, a water nymph that looks like kind of like a lizard, which is Sobble, and a grass type monkey that it looks like he, that he has a little stick and he bangs it. It's really kind of cool. Um, but I mean, I think I'm excited for the game. I'm probably gonna buy both of them and play the hell out of them like I normally do on every other Pokemon game. <laughs> So, shocker. Yeah, shocker right there. Hey, I actually didn't really get back into games and like into the Pokemon games until I want to say that the DS came out because I didn't play a lot of the ones that were on the Game Boy Advance. And I'm kind of sad that I didn't because some of those games were really good. Uh, <laughs> I stopped like I played blue and yellow and then I stopped. And then I didn't pick up another Pokemon game until Diamond, Diamond and Pearl, which was two generate three generations behind. So I was like, damn, I didn't realize it. But uh, Nintendo, they just they have a thing. They just and then that's not the only thing. They actually even announced that they're going to have other Pokemon games or Pokemon themed things go throughout the year, which is good. So I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to do a little prediction <clears throat> time and I'm going to say. I think they're going to update uh, Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee with a new new area. Maybe Johto would be nice. Adding some more like Pokemon from like the uh, the second generation. Like, so correct me if I'm wrong with the, the Let's Go series, right? That's really more framed on the original um, Blue and Red games, right? So first gen? Yes. It's based off of the original. It's based in... Uh, the Kanto region, which is the original uh, area where red and blue was and green. Um, But that was kind of more not mainstream because it wasn't a traditional RPG. It was putting a lot of stuff from uh, Pokemon Go into that game, which is, I'm fine with that. It was a, it's, I still play it. 
I mean, I not I might not play it like all the time because once you have 152 Pokemon, the only th- other thing you can do in there is look for shinies. That's in uh, let's uh, that's in let's go. Yeah, that's or in let's that's... Go. okay. But it's it's it sucks because like I play a lot of Pokemon Go because of my wife. And she, like, no joke, she is like insane with the game, and I I don't mind it because it's her release, her little thing that she likes playing. So I don't mind it at all. But she has, she we like we compete a little bit. So she takes my phone and my account sometimes and goes does a raid. But there's four generations of Pokemon that you can catch in Pokemon Go, but only hmm. one generation that you can put into Let's Go. So I'm assuming that they're going to expand that and give you more Pokemon that you can catch in that game, which would be great. Because a lot of people that play Pokemon Go can then transfer it over and get rewards that way. Now, do you think they'll actually do that, um, you know, for something that's current? Or do you think they'll actually try to do something, uh, you know, do that for more of the uh, games that are, that are going to be coming out for Sword and Shield? Because wouldn't you think that they would want to highlight the Sword and Shield aspect a little bit more? So probably give uh, gamers a little more things to do in those games. I think they would, but I think what they could do is use Let's Go as a branch. Mm-hmm. Like you bring your Pokemon Go like characters into let's go you can't bring them back to pokemon go which is fine i don't mind that but then be able to transfer your let's go pokemon to sword and shield which i think would be a good segue of like they could probably bring back the pokemon bank (coughs) which is another game like another thing that they had on the 3ds which was very popular um i they have so many options up and around that they could do which I'm really excited for. I, I mean, Nintendo is Nintendo, and and the fact of the matter that they're also coming out with a link to Link's Awakening later. I was on wondering when you were going to get to that. That's my. That's what I'm excited for. See, I brought me it back. Pokemon. Brought that's it back. much. <laughs> hey, I get it. Po- Pokemon's not for everybody, but I love when I used to get criticized for watching Pokemon. I'm 32 years old, and I still play Pokemon. I don't give a shit. <laughs> Yeah, the heck with it. I'll still watch first gen Pokemon cartoons. I don't care. I watch enough freaking uh, anime, so I will bit. But uh, but yeah, Link's Awakening. I, I'm actually super stoked for. It's going to be awesome. I hope they add more to it than the original because the original it had because it was a mobile game, like not 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 a mobile game, but like in tra- today's sense, it was a mobile game where you can put it into this little system and you can take with you right but you didn't have the option of seeing it because most of the game boys back then were not it came out in what 93 yeah so it was actually i think uh first gen uh game boy yeah it wasn't until generation four of the game boy they came with lights yeah. yeah, and that's one, uh, I think that was Link's Awakening TX, I think? Yeah, right? I have that one, but that was for the Game Boy Color. Mm-hmm. That was one of the launch <clears throat> titles for Game Boy Color, so they made Link's Awakening, and they put the different color palette so you could see it in color. But it still wasn't lit up. So, I mean, I think it's just, this whole game is going to be amazing. Everyone's bitching and moaning. He looks so weird. Well, <laughs> it's actually what I wanted to talk to you about also. So from one Zelda fan to another, um, and you can attest to this one, uh, when Wind Waker first had come, uh, I fell in love with, uh, I started getting into the Zelda series myself with, um, was it Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, then I went back to the OG series, played the original Zelda, um, played Zelda 2, and then, uh, didn't beat those two games, oh, but, oh, uh, Zelda 2, oh god. <laughs> no, it well, at least one thing, uh, could get of a Dark Link, but, um, so, when the Wind Waker had come out, uh, I saw the trailers. I went ape shit on Matt. I said, I'm not buying it. I hate this game. It looks so stupid. They're going to a complete wrong direction. I, I didn't like the art style. I fell into that camp. It wasn't until about f- five or six years later where I actually played the game, beat it, and told Matt, I was like, I'm dumb. I should have played this when it first came out. It was and awesome. I, and I was the one sitting in the behind him. I'm like, I told you so. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Because so now that uh, my my head's a little more clear, love that style, like that mm. cel shaded art style, I always liked it. 
I mean, I didn't think it like I thought Link's head was too footballish for me, but I mean, it didn't like in that original game. But I, I didn't mind it. It didn't wasn't so bad that it turned me off because I've never been one of those people that in like graphic graphic overhaul and a different art style. I'm going to hate it. No, mm. I'm going to play it because it's a Legend of Zelda game. Probably one of my favorite games is Minish Cap. And it's a it's one of those 16 bit games, 32 bit games. It's just I don't give a crap about the art style. So long as it's a great game and it plays amazing and the storyline is good. I'm there. Mm -hmm. like one mm -hmm. of the one games that I kind of mad that I never beat, but I have to beat eventually is is um, a link to, link to the past. Oh, my I've God. I've never beaten game. that game. But. I always hear that it's one of the best Legend of Zelda games, and I just never beat it. Dude, it's so much fun. I got, I haven't beaten it yet either, but I'm like three quarters of the way done. I like, I have everything. I have the sword upgraded. I have the, uh, uh, the tunic. I forget what kind of tunic I haven't played in like uh, six months or whatever. Um, uh, that game is so fun. So I, it, it kind of sucks though uh, with the new Link's Awakening coming out because I saw the, uh, I saw the. Um, the art style, I was like, okay, it's different, but I love Link's Awakening, so I'm, I'm still going to buy it. I don't care. I'm not going to do another Wind Waker. But um, I, I feel like you and I kind of keep on going off on a tangent. We haven't heard from Eric, so I kind of want to transition from uh, from Nintendo to something I think that uh, Eric has been, uh, you know, drooling to talk about. So with um, what was uh, what was Omar saying that uh, what was it Anthem, right? Oh, yeah. So Anthem is... Um, apparently breaking consoles and you can call me an old man i had no idea what the heck he meant i i needed matt and eric to tell me that is uh basically just busting consoles so what do you guys think of that i know nothing i haven't really followed uh much of anthem as of late so what do you guys think of that let's uh let's hear from eric um i don't know where you got the information from where do you um well i read that actually i read it on twitter earlier today mm -hmm. that um with the newest patch that just came out i want to say a day ago mm -hmm. maybe earlier Basically, what it was, it was, <laughs> it wasn't that it's breaking consoles. It's basically something in the firmware or the code of the game is actually shutting down the console, PlayStation huh. or or Xbox. It's just shutting it down. So gamers are all up in arms because they're like, "Is this gonna break? Void my warranty? Is this gonna break it? Is this gonna be like the red ring of death or the yellow light of death?" Oh God! Like. Is it going to be like one of those type deals? Okay. But I mean, it's it's a code. They're going to release a patch in the next like next couple of days. It'll be fine. Everyone, it's just it, this game is under so much scrutiny, scrutiny that scrutiny? Because, yeah, scrutiny. Thank you, scrutiny yeah. because it's an EA title and it's not doing as much as everyone is saying. But for the mm -hmm. people who have played the game and actually got into it. Everyone loves it. There are there are okay. certain people on the internet, and I call them keyboard keyboard warriors, that just like to hate on a game because it's a certain developer. Mm -hmm. Like everyone attributes EA for Apex. EA had nothing to do with Apex. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like there wasn't respawns. Um, uh, was it chairman? Was like EA did not do anything with this game. We are just putting it on their pro platform. That's pretty much it. They're like, <laughs> they had nothing to do with the development, the distributing, the price point, nothing. They had nothing to do. Even the loot boxes, they had nothing to do with this game. But they're profiting from it. I mean, they just reached, what, this morning, which is today's uh, the 4th uh, of March. They just hit 50 million players. It took them four weeks to hit 50 million players mm -hmm. you know how long it took fortnite to hit 50 million players i think 16, a few months huh? 16 weeks Whoa. <laughs> like that's just incredible like that a game that came out of nowhere just took over everything like it's amazing to me well i think after a while of you uh you know playing the same thing but basically for the most part over and over and over no you know, car to cartoon aesthetics aside, you know, you can only 
have so many dance moves and build so many damn walls where you're just like, is there anything more to this game? I don't know. And then you got Apex coming out of nowhere. You know, awesome graphics. Looks like, uh, you know, from everything that I heard, I played it once. You know, I gotta, I want to try to play it again when I can. But um, controls seem pretty legit. Um, Eric probably knows, Eric knows a lot more about that. What do you think about uh, how uh, Apex controls? Uh, Apex, I mean, Respawn Entertainment has a really good uh, control scheme. Uh, Titanfall was really good. You know, sliding. They they were built off the Source Engine, and the Source Engine is renowned for having some of the best um, controls. You know, just their their engine is just super simplistic, but at the same time, it could be super complex. Which is mm-hmm. like in CS:GO. You, I mean, CS uh, Source and CS:GO, you had the um, bunny hopping, where you can manipulate the movement of your character while you're also jumping, so you can be fat. It's like people have been picking away at this engine for such a long time that it's just. At this point, it's got to be, like, one of the most renowned engines for having some of the best movement. So, like, when I think of movement, I think of maybe, like, um, Mirror's Edge had a lot to do with uh, advancing first-person movement. Um, oh, yeah, that was awesome. Then, yeah, I obviously, I think of Half-Life, because half like, even just the crouch jump, you know, like, hard that was at first, if you were, if you played that game really back in the day, um, when it came out, it was, like, crouch jumping was, like, such a weird thing to think about. But the better you got at it just from sprint, sprinting and crouch jumping was, like, one of the bigger hurdles in the beginning of the game. I guess it was good because m- most people were just used to Doom and uh, Quake and, you know, you just walk back and forth. It, uh, I don't know if... It, Doom didn't have the uh, verticality yet. They didn't have the Y-axis. I don't Probably think. Not. not. Not at first, but it's just, like, how complex it got over the years. And now people aren't even really doing much different at this point um so like uh, respawn entertainment kind of just realized like call of duty what do you have you have sprint uh battlefield you have sprint and then you have vehicles maybe but no one's really been pushing the the envelope on um getting back into changing movement schemes yeah and also even even the re like obviously it's in the namesake with their company respawn mm-hmm. they in- implemented a respawn uh area so if your teammate is down you can pick up his banner and then respawn him back in which i think is cool and then fortnite was just like hey we can do that too and they put a bus in the middle of the map i was like that's fucking like really really epic i mean that's fine. i don't see what the problem is they're not idiots either they're they what they had their most just from the article i was reading before um they had their most their highest play count not during some sort of event was at 7.6 million yeah and that's like ridiculous that's maybe for Steam. fortnite yeah for fortnite and that was in february 14th that was there that was 10 days after um apex launched hmm. so i mean they're they're fine and and at the end of the day they have so many people that you could probably queue uh for a normal fortnite match then you could have a match where they have the planes and all the shopping carts and stuff so if people really don't want to play um super try hard or if they do want to just mess around and then they have they they could do another server where it's respawning i don't see why you can't just put your preferred rules on and it would just match you with yeah i can see that 100 people that match your rule set and other i I still think 100 people especially in that kind of game is a little much i kind of like how apex did that where they only use 60 i I really like 60 i think that's a really decently good especially if you're doing that team base i don't know how apex would work like solo i feel like solo would hurt that they are they are making solo do accuse soon so i don't i don't think solo would be soup too bad but the time to kill in that game is super low um assuming i mean it's 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 low but at the same time it's also a little bit harder to actually hit your target yeah which is why the time to kill doesn't seem super low are they also going to buff like some of the weapons i don't think they i don't think they have any plans of buffing I, I think most people are calling for the wingman, wingman and to be peacekeeper. nerfed. <laughs> I think if anything, more of the weapons need to be buffed because of how... I mean, the wingman, it, it does a lot. But the recoil is ridiculous. It's, it's not the recoil either. It's it's just that, you know, you get six bullets in it normally. I think if anything, it needs to, they need to raise the um the uh, fire rate or lower the fire rate. So lower like, the fire rate? Yeah. yeah, so it shoots like almost as fast as the... um. Uh, what's it called? The longbow. I think if it had the same shooting speed as the longbow, people probably wouldn't complain about it that much. But the yeah. peacekeeper, fully kitted, and the um, 
Like you can get a legendary version of the peacekeeper and a legendary version of the um, wingman. The wingman, which means you have all legendary pieces on it, which makes which means it's it's the best it can get. Yeah. And those two weapons are known as being more of the popular <laughs> weapons. It's kind of like why would you put that on the map? Yeah. Yeah. But it's so, very I mean, hard to find. And those. don't forget, this game's only been out for a month. They have fifty million people to listen to. I so mean, yeah, there's only one way they can. I'm go, sure they're I'll... they're working on it. I don't. I think they want to put more game modes out first, and then worry about balancing later. Yeah, because I think what was the the other big one that they that they brought out was the uh, the hitboxes. Yeah, the hitboxes. There are some characters where the like like the, Gibraltar, uh, which is the big heavy mo- he uh, is, he's huge. Maui looking motherfucker. Oh my! Yeah. <laughs> now Pathfinder oh actually has Pathfinder too. Yeah. Pathfinder has an actual broken hitbox because you can shoot pieces of him that aren't technically. Uh, yeah, they're like the hitbox is bigger than the actual model, so that's something that they should be worried about. I don't think that like Gibraltar, he's just got he's just a big character. Yeah, but they were saying like the, people were saying like. Even give them twenty twenty five more hit points. I don't know. I don't like that idea at all. Really? No. Make them slower. Or no. or actually, you know, I heard one person, uh, Jack Braggs, who's very big into the PC gaming and first person shooters and stuff like that. He actually said, "Why not give them? Maybe not." He's like, he didn't think giving them extra health would help, but he thinks if you give them like an extra two inventory spaces or something like that will actually sway people to maybe pick them up so like in, like so when you have what a legendary backpack that you can hold what 12 items yeah what happens if you have a legendary backpack with say caustic or i don't a gibraltar why not carry 14 i mean I, to keep inside that idea is that everybody has a passive everybody has a q and everybody has an ultimate yeah so so i mean maybe they can get worked around with their different passives Gibraltar's is that he has a shield when he aims in. Yeah, which ADSs. is garbage. I mean, the shield's the shield's fine, but I mean, you also have to work around the play style with the character you're playing. If you're playing Gibraltar, maybe you want to play more of a front line. You want to understand that you're going to be the one getting hit the most and yeah. play accordingly. Or, or even if you're aiming down sights, maybe increase the speed a little bit. Like I feel like aiming down the sights, especially with the shield, like he's so slow. Like I played him a couple of times because I had the I had the really cool. Uh, skin for him because i was like ah let me try him out but i feel like even though he's a bigger character and they all every character runs the same speed mm-hmm. i still feel like he's god awful slow that that has to do with the placement of the camera i know if you're playing wraith your camera's way lower to the ground yeah. and it just feels like you're running faster but it really has to do with your fov and your like where the camera's placed on the map and the way your character moves around in the actual game because i think wraith literally like her body gets lower to the ground when she, she does runs. a naruto run. yeah so it just looks like she's lower to the ground so it looks like you're running a lot faster um but that uh, another thing that they do um respawn entertainment they had the um the the, the way you you fire your weapons yeah like, penis hello whoa <laughs> 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 that was amazing. <laughs> By the way, that was that was that was Ryan. Oh my god! Where's well, that was that. <laughs> he literally just popped in for a second to say penis and then leave. <laughs> oh my god, that was right. funny. Okay, so not to not to throw you guys off, but um, no, you know, uh, we gotta we gotta kind of start wrapping it up. So, uh, final thoughts here while we're on the topic. I actually, actually I was actually just thinking about a question. So, um. Now that Fortnite has basically been knocked down a couple of pegs, right? Where do you guys think PUBG is going to be falling in line of this? I think PUBG has kind of been, uh, you know, kind of like knocked out like entirely, no? Like it's out of uh, people's, uh, for, uh, like, you know, like they're out of their minds. I could be wrong. What do you guys think about, uh, like, you know, PUBG coming back? Or do you think it's going to kind of slowly fade away? So PUBG definitely has the, I think they have the foreign market down. Yeah. Um, China, Asia, the Asian market, definitely. Uh, I think the the thing is that it's on Steam. I mean, that, that's just kind of how it goes. Fortnite's on Epic, uh, PUBG's on Steam, and Apex is on Origin. That's just, you know, you, you just pick whichever one. I, I know people that play both. I know people that play Apex and they play Fortnite. Huh. You you know, you put so many hours into Fortnite, you're not just going to dump it. Yeah. Most mm-hmm. of the streamers are already going back to Fortnite. They go on and off on Apex. Um, it's really just whichever one you choose, which one, whichever one's your favorite. Now, like I said before, Fortnite 
gained people. They didn't lose anything. They they're gaining more and more people. Now they're now they just released season eight. Season eight has a free um a free battle pass. Well that's they're, that's right. They're doing perfectly fine. They're about to add more updates to make it more like, you know, take from what Apex did and put in their own little twist on it. It's just the battle Roy- it's just how battle royales are, are right now. MOBAs did the exact same thing when they came out. Dota 2, League of Legends, Heroes of Storm, all these uh MOBAs, they all took what they could from each other. Yeah, exactly. They they took what they liked from one thing. They had their little twist on what on whatever that was. Like League of Legends was first. Then you have Smite and Dota. Dota was our Dota's on Steam, so obviously they're gonna get two million plus players just because Steam. Mm. It, it's it's really you just pick your poison. I don't think anybody's really diminishing from one another. But if you were to choose between Fortnite and PUBG, I bet most people would have chose Fortnite. But now if you don't like either you have another one. Like, I hated both of them, to be honest. I thought PUBG was a little too slow. You get looted up, and you still get one shot from a sniper from yeah. cross map. Then you get Fortnite. I hate building. That's just, here. that's a mechanic I don't like. Most people probably don't, they don't really care about building. It's just part of the game. Mm-hmm. Now I have Apex. I don't have to worry about building. I like having different characters to choose from that make each experience unique. The map's really good. Looting in that game takes two seconds. I just like everything way more about Apex Legends than I do about any other yeah. game. Yeah. I mean, I've I've played actually a bunch of them. Like I've played this one. I played Apex. I played Fortnite. I played PUBG. I played Black uh Black Ops Blackout, whatever it's called. Mm-hmm. Um, I have to say, out of all of them, like for a pure like experience, I probably put more time into Apex just recently. Like I put some time into Fortnite. I had it on my Switch. I had it on my Xbox. I've even put it on my on my PlayStation, but the Apex I've actually had a lot more t- fun with. I like the pinging. I think it's a, the gunplay. I feel like I don't. If I get destroyed, I know it's because somebody had better aim than me. I I get that, not because somebody outbuild me. Like that that just shit that shit pissed me off. PUBG, right, so skill more than just uh you know being like uh you know I want to be freaking uh, engineer. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay. And I think the reason why Fortnite is doing so well right now is because it's a more dumb, like, I don't want to say dumbed down, but a more childish type game. You play like you want. You play how you want. Yeah. So it's obviously this is going to be better for, say, not maybe not our generation, but definitely the younger generation. The kids oh, you can that are just that. getting into games. I mean, you look at you look at Ninja, all of his fans are pretty much 12 or under. Or like, or like... I think like young teenagers. Yeah, like teenagers that are going through puberty think they're hot shit and they can do a, a 360 no-scope. Motherfucker, I was playing Halo before you were even born and doing 360 no-scopes. That's right, showing your great poops. Yeah, seriously. Can't even tell because I'm blonde. <laughs> Boom, bitch. Um... But I mean, I, I I just think it's it's one of those things. It's just it's you got to go with the times. I I enjoyed all of them. I want to see what I feel like battlefields is going to be a little interesting because I, I like battlefield. So I've I've always been a battlefield player, and I've always liked that franchise. I'm one. I'm kind of curious to see how what battlefields version of um battle royale mm-hmm. is going to be. Because I right. heard you can drive a tractor, and I'm kind of excited. But. So I think it's actually, uh, I, I think it's actually funny that uh, the battle royale craze is kind of, you know, like seeping to a lot of different video games. You, you, you know, it's kind of uh, really popular when Tetris has its own source of battle yeah, royale is. too. And you know what? <laughs> if you if you want some high level interest, and I don't know if you guys played that. Have you guys played it? I suck at Tetris. Uh, oh, dude, you, you I, mean, I love it. I'm terrible you, at it. I think I my my best one so far is I, I ranked 22. I got I got rank seven or eight. Ooh, nice. But high level piece, high tier high tier loot in that game. Letting you know, it's a straight piece. High oh, tier. dude, that's only high tier. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, guys. So that wraps up, uh, you know, uh, uh, this week's podcast. I'm sorry that uh, I kind of sound uh, more like I'm trying to be like a sex worker than anything else but uh hopefully next week i'll uh i'll sound a lot better i kind of like this format i I think it's uh you know a nice laid back uh you know 
not having to go uh, nuts over everything. But uh, guys, it was fun. Uh, yeah. I'm glad we were able to, uh, you know, go over a few things. You guys have anything else you wanted to talk about real quick? Or you're all good? Works for you. Smash, bash, channel smash. What is it? Super smash, Super channel, smash bash. channel bash. March 9th, <laughs> 6 p.m. Twitch.tv slash 4GZ. A4GZ. Be there. Or be square. We'll have a lot of fun. And we'll have, uh, we'll have, the four of us will be in the office and we'll actually have Dom from It's All Fun and Games. He'll be in the office with us. Oh, he's going to be down here? Yeah, he'll be here. Cool. So we will all be, uh, we'll have a good time. I'm excited. Yeah. Oh, this will be really good. Yeah, hopefully we'll have, uh, you know, an after party or something too. We'll bring hey. some Jack. Oh, yay. <laughs> <laughs> Drunk stream all right. Day. <laughs> oh god no that's gonna be terrible i'm trying to i'm trying to at least you know get in like you know top five top ten but uh <laughs> all right guys well it was fun uh you know uh another podcast down it was really fun talking with everybody gamers thank you very much for of course you know tuning in as always uh we're here for all for gamers and this is aj eric and matt and we'll catch you guys later see you in the next one peace Bye. catch it later guys <laughs>